So Bradford City have today completed their 11th summer signing of the 2023 transfer window and in today's video I will be bringing you guys my thoughts and opinions on this news. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try to 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment as well down in the comment section down below. Let me down below your thoughts on Bradford City completing another loan signing this time for Jonathan Tompkinson he joins on loan from Norwich City until the end of the season now he was actually signed on deadline day we knew kind of that this was going to happen he was in the home end I think for our game against Mansfield on Saturday as well and now it's finally officially been confirmed we've been waiting for days and days we actually thought that the deal had fallen through it has today though since been confirmed so make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you are new as well and let's get into it so Bradford City tweeted at 12 o'clock today saying we're delighted to announce the signing of defender Jonathan Tompkinson on loan from Norwich City FC after receiving clearance from the EFL on a deal which was completed ahead of Friday's transfer deadline. Now, obviously, deadline day was on Friday, as stated there, and we thought because it hadn't been announced on Friday night, we all assumed that it hadn't gone through. We've seen multiple deals that didn't get pushed through, most notably Luke Armstrong from Harrogate to Wrexham. That one didn't go through, so we thought we could have been in that same boat. Thankfully, though, it has since been announced, and Bradford City's article does read, City complete Tompkinson loan. Bradford City at AFC is delighted to announce the signing of defender Jonathan Tompkinson on loan from Norwich City. The American-born centre-back arrives from the Skybet Championship outfit until the end of the 2023-24 season, after the Bantams received clearance from the EFL on a deal which was completed ahead of Friday's transfer deadline. At 6 foot 4 inches Tomkinson be began sorry, his youth career at FC Dallas before a spell at Solar SC prior to joining Norwich in 2019. The 21 year old is capped by the United States at under 17 level and has three senior appearances for the Canaries to his name. He spent the second half of last season on loan at Stevenage helping Borough secure promotion to Skybet League when he actually played against us when we beat them 3-2 at their place. He did actually feature in that match and so far score gave him a 5.9 rating in that one but we played quite well overall on that day. Tomkinson said I am really excited to be here. This is a big opportunity for myself. I am looking forward to playing some games and hopefully chasing promotion. It has been a hectic few days but when I got the call saying Bradford City were interested it was an offer I could not refuse. This is a big club with big ambitions and I want to play in important games. I've always considered myself a ball playing centre back. I'm comfortable on the ball and not afraid to step in and pass through the lines that is something we've definitely lacked so far this season none of our centre backs can really do that apart from maybe Odessina but he seems like he's been frozen out of the squad once again this season I'm really looking forward to getting started I will give my all for the club I'm really excited to be here and I think we will go big places Bantam's boss Mike Hughes said we are pleased to have brought Jonathan in and wish him a warm welcome to the club John is a strong centre half with different sides to his game who after we tried to get a deal done for him on deadline day we are now finally delighted to have with us as well as the physical attributes to compete at this level his experience in League 2 with promoted Stevenage last year and over in the USA make him a cultured footballer with a versatile skill set. We are looking forward to getting him started in Claret and Amber and I am sure he's looking forward to playing in front of you all. Now there is no bottom message there which normally states what squad number he's going to have, who he's going to be sponsored by, I'm not really too sure, maybe they've just forgotten to put that in but we've got a lot of players now, I think we've got 30 selectable players obviously we ended last season with 29 we were then told we'd have a leaner and meaner squad and we've now ended up with more players so I'm not really too sure why our transfer strategy and recruitment strategy seems to have changed from our defeat against Carlisle to now I, I personally am not going to complain I think I'd rather have more bodies with how this season's going to go, but I'd still rather have more quality. And like I said, this one looks like, on paper, a good signing. Who in that back three is he going to you know, displace? I'm not really too sure because it's very rare that Premier League and Championship clubs send out their youngsters to go out on loan to sit on the bench or potentially sit in the stand. You know, we've got six centre-backs now. We'll get onto our squad later on in the video, but having six centre-backs is a hell of a lot, so I don't think we'll be going to a back four. It would look like at one point we might be doing that, but it looks like we're definitely going to be sticking with the back three this season, and it's just more cover, a different option in there for us to have, so I don't mind the signing whatsoever. Obviously, with him coming from another club, Norwich City also tweeted at 12 o'clock today saying, Defender Jonathan Tompkinson has joined Bradford City on loan for the 
remainder of the season. Best of luck, JT. Their article does then read Tomkinson loaned to Bradford City. Jonathan Tomkinson has completed a season long loan move to League Two side Bradford City. The 21 year old defender joined Norwich City's academy in 2019 and has since progressed from the under 18s and 21 sides to making three appearances for the first team. The Bantams finished sixth in League Two last season before losing in the playoff semi finals to Carl United. Everyone at Norwich City wishes Jonathan the best of luck with his loan move. Now, obviously, we have brought in another centre back, but he's not actually going to be available until at least October. On the 20th of July, it was confirmed by Norwich City manager saying that uh, Jonathan Tompkinson's injury blow will not force David Wagner into the market to bolster Norwich City's centre back stocks. The American youngster is set for 10 to 12 weeks on the sidelines. That was from the 20th of July so that is around the start of October time which is quite frustrating but we've not really got many games in September and we've got a very very hectic October but the youngster like I say is set for 10 to 12 weeks on the sidelines after suffering an ankle injury in the closing stages of the recent friendly draw against a team that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. City's medical team are still assessing whether Tomkinson will require surgery but Wagner wants to take a look at fellow development centre back Jaden Warner on the upcoming Austrian tour. So it's disappointing and frustrating because I feel like at right now it would be a good opportunity to get him in there. He's also right footed, so a fifth right footed centre back that we've got at the club. And I do just want to quickly go through some of his statistics from last season with his spell at Stevenage. Now he made seven appearances in total, four of them at being starts, averaging 16.9 touches per 90 with a 56% passing accuracy, 68% in his own half, and 41% in the opposition half. 41% of his long balls were accurate, and 36% of his chip passes were accurate. He kept two clean sheets, averaging 0.6 interceptions per game. 0.6 tackles per game and 1.3 clearances per game as well. He had no errors which led to a goal or a shot and no penalty offences committed as well. He averaged 1.7 total duels per 90 when he's 67% on the ground and 89% in the air. And that was only 1.1 per game that he had to compete with but to win 89% of your aerial duels yes again I know it's only in 7 appearances but that is very very impressive in my opinion like I say 6 foot 4 so he's another man mountain type centre half and while our football hasn't exactly been the most entertaining to watch we've not really apart from that game against Markham we've not really had too many problems defensively I mean you look at that game against Markham two of them goals that we conceded when we went to a back four so if you look at it from the goals conceded it when we're looking at the formations the back three is actually quite solid from us while we're not really scoring the goals going forward we are creating the chances we're looking solid defensively 90% of the time in the back three and while I've not exactly been the biggest fan of it, when you think of it from that point of view, it makes sense why Matt Hughes is still persisting with it. And when the goals do come, and I think they will hopefully eventually come, I think we could be on for a successful one. But like I say, scoring goals is the hardest thing to do in football. And if we don't get that, we are going to have a lot of boring nil-nil draws this season because we don't look that concerned defensively you know I think over the last couple of games Lewis has looked back to his best and I think the defence have got their confidence back in him I think Mike Hughes is selecting his best defence at the moment with Halliday and Richards as the wing backs I think they're certainly much better than Oyugo K and Rydal in my opinion if we have a look then how the squad is probably going to line up then between now and January I have moved Odessina over to the left centre back position even though he is right footed because if I'd have put Odessina staying on the right side the graphic would have been too big to physically fit on the screen so Odessina is over on the left side and that is where he has play for the majority of his Bradford City career anyway despite him being right footed I think it's very well balanced in my opinion now obviously Tullock is still down as a striker because that's where he played against Mansfield but he said himself he's more of a left winger number 10 so we'll just have to wait and see what goes with there but we're very very balanced I would have personally liked another central midfielder in there but I think if we get any more injury problems that are really significant then I think we might look in that free agent market there's a lot of good free agents available at the moment but they'll probably be looking for championship league one clubs and if they don't get that in a month or to then what's not to say that they might come in until January or come in until the end of the season you never really know although if they're like 34 35 years of age we'll probably give them a two or three year deal overall thoughts then for me I think on paper this one is another very good sign and like I say we didn't really have many loans until the last couple of days obviously two in on deadline day another one coming in as well even though this one was technically a deadline day sign and I'm looking forward to seeing him play frustrating that we're not going to see him play though for a number of weeks because of this ankle injury that is quite important to note but overall for me I think this is one of our best 
better signings recently, in my opinion. He seems to have a little bit of pedigree about him as well. I've not really seen too many comments from Stevenage fans, but he didn't really play all too much there. So fingers crossed he has a successful time here. He nails down a spot in that starting eleven. As of right now, if I'm looking at our centre-back options, my personal back three would be probably Platt on the right, Tompkinson in the middle, and maybe Odessina still on the left. Now, Stubbs for me doesn't suit a back three. I think he's been very poor so far this season. Ash Taylor, can't say I've been impressed with him whatsoever. Oyogoke is not a centre-back. And I just prefer having a bit of pace in there with Odessina to Kieran Kelly, who I actually thought had a really good game against Mansfield on Saturday. But I'm going to leave it there for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join at 80 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get a comment as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below what are your thoughts on Bradford City signing Norwich City centre back Jonathan Tompkinson on loan until the end of the season thank you all very much for watching have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all tomorrow at 4 o'clock for another one peace